Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. And on this episode, we are reviewing the new HBO series, The Last of Us. The first three episodes have dropped for season one. So we wanted to give our recommendations. Is this a now a new franchise that you should get invested in? Now, The Last of Us is based upon a video game by the same name that came out around seven years ago, right? It was 2015, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, so this is part of the genre of video game based TV or movie, TV series or movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll start with the overall impressions. You know, there's going to be spoilers here. Um, not There's not really a lot to spoil at this point. Uh, other than the premise, which of course you learned very, very early on. What, what were your overall impressions of the series so far? Loved I, it. I loved it. Totally loving yeah, it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I agree. Um, so the, the here's the premise. The premise is that in 2003, the world collapses like within a couple of days because of a rampant fungal infection. It's a foot fungus. It's, a, you're really, it's mostly a foot fungus. <laughs> yeah, people <laughs> die scratching their feet. Now, it's it's a fungus that takes over your brain and basically turns you into a fungal zombie. Right? Like like the real world, uh, what's it called, Bob? Cordyceps. Yeah, that, that happens Cordyceps. to ants. Mm-hmm. Yeah, But we're ants in this scenario. Right, it's Ophiocordyceps universalis. Um, no, it's not universalis. Whatever, it's one oh, of yeah. those. It's, cord- cordyceps. it's cordyceps. So it is, it's straight up a fungus that, um, in, in the show, of course, um, mutates because the world has warmed. Mm-hmm. Right, right? Be- because, because of cordyceps, global warming. Right, cordyceps cannot infect people. People are too, are too warm, too mm-hmm. warm, so they, they, don't, they don't infect us. The, the idea here is that it did mutate, and it can infect us, and, uh, and, and it took, takes over people just like the way cordyceps mm-hmm. takes over insects and spiders and things. Um, basically causing them to essentially find a tall place, hunker down, and then it just takes over and spores are released, which is spread the spores. So it's, mm-hmm. just, it's taking over the, the bodies, though, which is which is why mm-hmm. they selected cordyceps. Because when I was watching this and I realized that it was cordyceps, I was like, why cordyceps? They already did that with uh, the girl with all the gifts and mm-hmm. the prequel. It's already yeah. been done. But I realized very quickly that they picked it because it's so, like, amazingly horrific because yeah. it actually can take over bodies mm-hmm. and make them do stuff that's the that's the real draw even though it's it's not likely it's yeah. not it's not likely to to mutate enough because the problem is that a lot the way they show cordyceps in the show it's you know the, the way that's transferred by 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 mouth tendrils right yeah. the, the tendrils that very come creepy. out that's very, it's scary. very creepy and also bites but that's not how fungus fungi fungi there's three ways to pronounce that word apparently okay. fungi all, all fungi Fungi. Um, so I'm going to say fungi. Fungi don't really do that. Think of absolute uh, um, athlete's foot. It's like it's surface contact. That's how you really catch it. Mm-hmm. Some are air, airborne, which is which makes the game more accurate. Right. Um, in the game, but, just to clarify, in the game, um, there are areas that where the spores are in the air, and the uh, the characters in the game have to put on gas masks. You know, like mm-hmm. the, the filtered masks, yeah. in order to but travel through those areas. It's far creepier to, when you see those those tendrils coming out of the mouth that is it's direct that transfer. is freaky as hell yeah. but um but also the chance of cordyceps mutating to such a degree where it can also where it can also um do what it what it does in the show mm-hmm. in terms of um what is what are some of the examples i wanted to use it takes over your muscles and actually can control your body yeah but it also it also is warm enough it, yeah. it can it can survive it can get past your immune system mm-hmm. which is another thing and it also while it's mutating that much to do that it's also also controlling your mind which which the chance of that happening is is it's not impossible but it's yeah. much more likely. The thing <laughs> is, scary. it's much more. Don't be afraid of that. This is what you should be afraid of: are the fungal infections that kill people, yeah. that mm-hmm. already can infect us, already kill people. The 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 good news, if any, is that it's really people that are Im- immunocompromised. Those mm-hmm. are the people that are yeah. getting infected and getting and dying. If you're in good shape, you're not going to get it. But if there is a mutation, 
there's a rising concern that this can mm. become, that this can reach epidemic levels and pandemic levels right. is possible. And we need to take it seriously because who's talking about fungal pandemics? Nobody. Maybe yeah. now because of this show. Yeah. No one's talking about it now and they need to start talking about it. Yeah, but that's the gimme in this, in this show, yes. in this series yes. is that you get this horrific right. and that's just, mutated just, fungal the pandemic. Science, the real yeah, science it was good to important. hear it because, you know, yeah. as a viewer of this, the first thing I started to think about was, whoa, like, you know, I don't know anything about this. Like, how how possible is this? You know, fungus is a nasty business. If you yeah. get a serious fungal infection, it's a lot harder to deal with than, you know, viral or bacterial. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we do have antifungals. Don't, mm -hmm. I hope we don't use bombs as a first resort. Try the antifungals. They're, you know, they're hit and miss. They're not great. But that's what you would you would try so first. So let's talk about the series. So uh, yes, yeah. this is another post-apocalyptic zombie movie genre, right? Yeah, yes. Uh, but it's different enough that I think I'm, I'm enjoying it. You know, again, we, we're, we all are really they're enjoying the series. They're beautiful. The zombies are cool. Yeah, the different. zombies are, are different. You know, they're they're not the typical slow-moving zombies. They're they're fast, uh, but they're also blind, uh, and but they echolocate. So they have this creepy, you know. A clacking noise that they make, chittering noise, which adds to to their creepiness, which yeah. is very very good. And they're they're you know reasonably hard to kill. Mm -hmm. Even like one shot to the head doesn't always do it. You know, in the in the more so in the um, the TV series than the than the video game though. It often takes a few hits you know to take them out. So yeah, they're 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 sufficiently scary. But the story doesn't rely entirely on the mere fact that there are zombies, right? right. So. Uh, no, no, the very, story. Yeah, very good character development. Yeah, a good storyline. Uh, there and there's good world building. So here we are, 20 years into the post-apocalyptic, you know, collapse, and you know, new world order is sort of establishing itself. That's very challenging, right? Yeah, I mean, this story. The video game included, but you know we're, we are talking about two different things here. Well, we'll just, let's just talk about the TV show, and then we could later on talk about the differences between the video game and the TV show. The, I I look at this very much as this is definitely a story about people, and it's not just like a, a like a science fiction show mm -hmm. to show you cool special effects about what the monsters look like. I mean, there's a lot of games like that. There's a lot of TV shows that that you know revolve around the special effects. This show s stood out for me, and yes, I'm willing to watch yet another zombie-based show yeah. because this show is written so well. It's it's very compelling. The characters are in very serious situations. It is it is a very serious show. Mm -hmm. You know, there, it isn't taking it lightly. There's no hu there is no humor. Stakes in this are show. high. Stakes are high, and you, you feel people it. People are desperate. Yeah, you feel. Yeah. It. And then, so part of the setup is that you know the government is doing what they can to you know, keep the survivors alive, but they have turned into an authoritarian, you know, uh, dictatorship basically. And they're brutal, you know? So they, this is a, again, good video game set up because everyone basically is against you. So we have the government can't really trust them. They're, 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 they're happy to murder people if it increases the survival of whatever, whoever they think they can save. Uh, there are the terrorists, you know, mm -hmm. the fireflies. They're, they've already alluded to raiders. You know, if you go outside the protected zones. And slavers. Yeah, raiders, slavers, and, of course, the, the zombies themselves. So there's a lot of, and there's going to be some preppers out there, too. Right. Yeah. So there's a lot of potential, you know, enemies uh, out there to, to contend with. Again, a very good setup for a video game because you need a lot of things to shoot at, right? Uh, <laughs> but it also works really well, you know, in the uh, in the TV show. Because our 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 plucky heroes have you know they're like just them against the world you know they've and, made it very clear yeah. in this show first of all like you know people get killed and you can almost see <sighs> shit sorry Ian I got to do something about that yeah okay what's Let's happening switch, uh, yeah. okay I'm just gonna I'm gonna mute this. Your, I had, uh, we, I had your, heavy in on my phone. Is your sex toy all charged up? Is yeah. That that for? <laughs> so I'll have to cut to this. Yeah, so I'll start, I'll, start, I'll start my... Yeah, do a camera change if you remember where you were, Ian. You did? Okay. So this show is great because, like you said, Steve, the stakes are high. Um, you know, there there is an abundance of, you know, visceral 
uh, you know, fighting and there's, there's death comes easy and the people who are delivering the death and, and viewing the death seemingly don't care. You know, the, the, they're, the, they're this, numb at this they're point. Numb, they make it very clear early on that, uh, you know, that 20 years on, again, people, these are the survivors. These are the last of us, right? These people are not only are they tough, hmm. but they are emotionally numb. Yeah, they've and, been through it. And, and hard and hard edged, you know, because they know that any day can be their last but that's that's interesting too because you know a lot of times in zombie stories and zombie movies we're seeing people like right after right after the zombie outbreak and what it's like and there's still mm -hmm. a lot of humanity left you yes. know but in this show you know humanity is kind of hard to come by mm -hmm. out of necessity though and you get that you understand that the, it's very the world is so deadly that they have no other choice and you have to be able to emotionally handle this or you're going to die you know like that's part of it yeah i mean in reality it doesn't have to be that way you know we, we make that assumption that as soon as law and order breaks down everyone becomes a homicidal maniac but it's not really true people can't cooperate and collaborate in, in a situation like this every human life is precious mm -hmm. you know the most precious resource that exists taking human life casually would you know not necessarily be what people become yeah you know and there is law and order within the qz like within the, the quarantine zone it's a brutal dictatorship at this point but there is law and order you know and they don't have part it's one of the things that's interesting so from an aesthetic point of view the world is beautiful in it's you know horribleness like watching buildings leaning over on each other and everything it's a very compelling world aesthetically it's a little like i do wonder like within the city which wasn't outside the city they bombed it to crap so it makes sense that it looks terrible but inside the city you know, they're still living there. Why is it so horrible? Why, why aren't they just keeping their rooms clean? It looks like Fallout 4, where you're like 200 years in the future. Well, they don't They don't have the resources. And yeah, I just think it's a little bit more than what I think. Things could be way more civilized than they're depicting. But this is the way it, it turned it's, out. It's, I know it's good for the story. It's good for the game. But yeah, it, it does make you wonder think about like would it be that bad would it really be so horrible inside a protected city um yeah but even you, even like the work that they need to do mm -hmm. right so there's there is a scene um where the main character joel is signing up for you know another round of work and it just seemed like everything that they needed to do was bad well he was doing the worst jobs to get the most ration cards because he needs them to do his thing but to bribe guards. Understood, to but yeah. there's a lot of really bad jobs that people yeah. need to do, and Absolutely. it's it's part of the, that life. You know, and it doesn't seem to be a lot of available electricity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, people aren't going in and turning lights on when they yeah. go into their, their, you know, completely wrecked I, buildings that they live in. I want to go live with Bill and Frank. Yeah, so... <laughs> they had a damn Yeah, they had good. a damn good, yeah. We could talk about that. Episode three was... An amazing episode. Uh, it's getting, it was wonderful. As an isolated episode, it's getting a lot of reviews, and yeah. So we, we you know, we, we spend an, almost an entire episode with a prepper, and uh, and his you know his lover and eventually husband, uh, as they build a life together in the apocalypse, mm -hmm. and it was very sweet. Um, it, we get a little bit of a glimpse into some more of the backstory of, of some of the other characters, and. Uh, you know, Bill is a major character in the video game. Um, so How major, he, he, major, like major. Well, I mean, he's a resource he's for the player right, character. The resource. Yeah. Um, we could click over cause it is this to like the comparing the video game to the TV show episodes one and two were almost scene for scene. Yeah. It was pretty damn accurate. Um, in terms of the real, on. the real core plot the, in the video game. There's a lot of sequences which are gameplay. They're not really pushing the plot forward. And obviously they sort of skip yeah. over those or rework them in the TV show. But in terms of like a lot of the major scenes, the cut scenes, you know, that really push the plot forward in the game were pretty much identical. Definitely. In, in the TV show until you get to episode three, uh, which makes sense for a couple of reasons. So first of all, you go away from the main characters, which of course in the video game, you're always first person with the main character by definition. Uh, but yeah, and you, and you get the perspective and the backstory of Bill and Frank. Uh, and so that was a departure. And then the other big departure, which is I think something that's a little controversial among hardcore fans of the game. This is a, definitely a spoiler. 
uh, is that in the game, Frank dies and Bill is now this like grumpy, you know, prepper, mm. post-apocalyptic guy who is a contact for the player, uh, Joel. And um, in the TV show, Frank and Bill die together. Yeah. So they kill off the character before you even get to that point in the storyline where Joel would be meeting up with him. Uh, and, and that, that did, that's a, it seems to anger some people. That's a pretty big departure. Yeah. But as I always say, you know, these are different media. You can't expect a TV show to hew always very closely to a video game <laughs> because obviously <laughs> a lot of video game plot serves the purpose of, again, of gameplay not good storytelling. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can do both, but you make different compromises. And uh, and so, yes, there's going to be differences. You know, th this was great storytelling. I think if you, this is a perfect example. Episode three was great storytelling. You know, in and fact. And they had to depart from the video game to get there. Right. I totally agree, Steve. Um, there, there's a lot of things to be said about, you know, having source material and then a TV show or movie is made. And then, you know, a lot of people do get upset because mm -hmm. there has to be, there is always a translation of the material when you go to the screen, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's done well. Sometimes it's not done well. We can give examples of, of all those. But right. in this case, after, you know, after knowing and seeing the video game and, and, you know, finally getting to see the TV show, mm -hmm. I think what they did, all the changes that they made, make perfect sense good. and this they is a case changes. study on what needs to be changed in order to turn it into a tv or mm -hmm. a movie you know they're they're like steve was saying there's a lot of times in the, in the video game where you know the character is literally just doing stealth moves and all this stuff like you can't do it tv show can't do that of course right and also violence serves a different purpose in the game than it does in the tv show in the video game violence is the gameplay it is what you're you're doing you're you're the source of a lot of the violence, you know, that's the fun for the player. You're going, I have to kill the bad guys. In in the in the TV show, the character of Joel can't be as violent as a player in a video game, right? right? I mean, you just have to say that at the outset. Uh, and and there seems to and, be more moral implications, yeah, they're, right? They're titrating the the violence very differently. You know, it's because Joel has to have an emotional arc within episodes and within the season and within the series. And, and, and so they so, actually limited the violence early on. Yeah, they limited on it on purpose. It, it was like you, you got to the violent things after they happened mm -hmm. and they wait, they were kind of waiting until Joel had his little breakthrough moment with the light shining on him. And he pounded that, that guard right, guy yeah. into a pulp. That was more and powerful because it wasn't yes. shooting his way through the first, yes. the entire first episode. Right. And it also connects you to his relationship with his daughter and the, how that mirrors. Yes. His, which is going to be huge. relationship with Ellie, with Ellie. So yeah, again, that's good storytelling. You know, they also add things in, like they added the, and I love this scene. It's such a great scene early on in the first episode, when you go to the, to the, to the present time, you know, 20 mm -hmm. years after the, the outbreak, the, the kid who wanders into the quarantine zone, um, they, then the officers take him in, they're going through the routine. They test him to see if he's infected uh, and right. he's infected. Right. So one guard shows from behind the kid, you know, the, the red you know, screen showing that he's infected to the guard who's dealing with him. And, you know, so you learn so many things. So first of all, they've done this probably a hundred thousand times, right? Mm -hmm. They know exactly what they're doing. They're comfortable with it. They're, they're professional. She doesn't miss a beat, does not reveal anything to the child, just says, we're going to give you some medicine and then we're going to give you your favorite food. It's going to be wonderful. And of course they euthanize him immediately. Right. They're also like, they don't blink twice about doing that to them. It's just a job. They have to do it. Uh, and then you see Joel sort of carrying the, 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 corpse of the yeah, child yeah. To, to dump on the fire to burn him and he is numb you yeah, know, at that completely. point and so we learn a lot about what society has become in that power emotionally powerful but very brief yeah. scene i was completely added it wasn't in the video game but that's necessary for really good storytelling again just meeting different needs than what you have right. in video games. Well, you want to take as little time as you can to give the viewers as much information as you can. Yes. And it also has to be pleasing. You know, yes. there has to be something and compelling, clever yeah. and compelling about it. Steve, you mentioned that they show you a lot in a very brief yeah. window. They they do, but they also sh tell you a lot 
unbeknownst to you, only in retrospect yeah. would you even know it. For example, did you guys notice that they, they had these little throwaway lines? Oh, I forgot the birthday cake. Sorry, I forgot the birthday yeah. cake. Um, oh, we don't have any pancakes. Sorry. And uh, the, the daughter is offered like biscuits from the next door neighbor, the, the people that got infected. Yeah. No, no thanks. Don't want the biscuits. If they ate any of all that, of those were probably they, a source of infection. They right, would yeah. have been infected, and you would never, you never even think about it as it's happening. But yeah. only if you think about it or watch a review show or whatever, will you actually even know that they did that specifically. Yeah, yeah they make they it. Were pretty, this close to they, getting infected? They make it pretty clear with flashbacks that the fungal infection probably started in the wheat supply, yeah. mm -hmm. got into processed foods, was distributed around the world, and that's why the infection basically spread everywhere. That was a perfect that storm. Is so, that perfect was, storm. Yeah. Of and like not only infection. that, it makes it makes so much sense. It's very good writing, but it also makes it scarier. Yeah. Because it wasn't like it started somewhere, and there's no way to isolate yourself. Like the, those that wheat product, it or so if, if it's wheat, it could be virtually anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the scientist, remember the scientist who said bomb everything. If when you saw them her eating at the restaurant, she wasn't eating anything. It was like meat and potatoes. Whereas most of the other people in the restaurant were eating something that had grain yeah, in it. Right, so right. They, they they think about it so, you know, such the, it's at the minute level. It's great. I love that it's stuff. That's it's a tough deal. I mean, it, it, it makes me a little sad because I'm a, I consider myself a bread maker now. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, next time I make bread, I'm going to be like, uh, <laughs> you know. Well, it's yeah, not so cordyceps. It, it is good to see such an excellent example of the video game to cinema genre. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a good choice, I think, a video game because the game itself is extremely cinematic. It's you know, not necessarily my favorite type of game because you're on rails, you're basically living the story and uh, you, rather than wandering freely in the world. It's uh, kind of like you're controlled by cordyceps in a way. <laughs> it kind of is, yeah. But but it's a great, it was a great source material yeah. for a TV show. And But they didn't, re they didn't lean so heavily on the video game that they didn't do their own writing. You know, they knew they have to build this world, they have to create that experience. The only other video game that I'm personally familiar with, I'm sure there's a ton out there, but I think the, the only other video game that I would say is even more cinematic and more amenable to a movie. Fallout 4? No. What? Is a, it, well, that is... That's, oh, Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead Redemption, yeah. especially Red Dead Redemption 2, is basically a really long movie or a trilogy or whatever. Yeah. Uh, cool. And it has cinematic mode. Like, if you turn that no on... No way. Game, you turn on cinematic mode. mode. And then rather than, you know, being in, like, the first person like you usually are with a video game, you're, you're seeing cinematic camera angles as you gallop through Whoa. the countryside. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, it was designed wow. to Very be that cool. way. Would not surprise me if we see something derivative of, of, that, of that game. Huh. Uh, but yeah, but there's so many the other ones that are like the world building is already done the aesthetic you know a lot of story elements are already there like fallout forward mm -hmm. another example of that or even like the the skyrim you know world i mean there's so many uh that could be excellent but this is definitely one of the better ones and they're so far i think they're hitting it out of the park yeah. in terms of translating it to the screen and i don't know if we mentioned it but the acting is is excellent Wonderful. top notch yeah it's excellent Wonderful. all right so guys if you enjoy this show this is alpha quadrant six and we are a science fiction review show, and we're going to be doing a lot of, we have a lot of good plans coming up for this mm -hmm. year. We're very excited about the upcoming year. There's supposed to be some good stuff coming out. So join us. Why not join us? Go to our website, alphaquadrantandthenumber6.com. You can listen to our podcast. You can watch us on YouTube. And you can become a patron if you want to support the show. And we'll see you next week.